Thank you very much, guys. Indeed, CJ getting the better hand over Gambit there. But uh, as we got into the beginning of the game and standard lanes, a lot of, what, of eyes were on Betsy and what he could do. And actually, he did execute it pretty well on TF in the beginning and, and timing the right teleports, Fisho. Uh, yeah, it was a good start for Gambit as a team and Betsy as well. I mean, there were maybe a few times where they used a little bit too many ultis to try and get like one kill. And they really needed these ultis ready as often as possible to snowball the lead. Because it was going to be like, okay, Betsy go gank top lane now. You get the first kill for Cabo Shot. Then Diamond will come up next and you get the second kill. Like, that was the way they wanted to play it. They used the Javan so well early to get an early lead and get these towers down. I really liked that play. The problem for Gambit was just they hit a bump in the mid game where it felt like they didn't know how to keep pushing that lead. And that's where they got into these big team fights, which were in favor of CJ. I think an unsung hero for this matchup that obviously we'd see nothing about it because it's just such an odd way of playing the game. Well, the cleanse from Ezreal. Now, you'd assume that Lee Sin would want to snowball the entire map for the solo lanes, get the Twisted Fit ahead, get the Jarvan ahead. But all of a sudden, the Ezreal with the cleanse is no longer a ganking target just because he can always escape the Twisted Fate. And yes, Twisted Fate can get, can get out of lane against Ezreal fine, but so can Ezreal just because of that summoner, especially against Yanni in the later team fights. Yeah, and it. They had so much protection by the end of it as well. There were Zonyas everywhere, there were Banshee's Veils everywhere, Scimitar, you know, Talisman to run away if all of that stuff failed for you. It's just almost impossible, I think, to lock a team like that up. Oh yeah, in the end, I mean, once we got full late game, Gambit couldn't win in terms of 5 versus 5. And if you look at the mid game for them, what Gambit should have done with their comp as well was just do a 1-4 split. Because you had Twister Fate and Corky sitting in the mid lane. That's a fantastic combo at really poking down towers fast. Not where you stand and you get like 10 hits. No, it's like one hit at a time. You got the Twister Fate throwing the card. You got the Lich Bane, or not the Lich Bane, the Trinity Force, sorry, for the Corky early on with the Sheen. So you have a lot of instant damage on a tower. And Kabusha was so fed on this Jarman that nobody could one on one him. So if he had a lane to push in on his own and the four guys in the mid lane, you would have controlled the jungle. CJ would be forced to run between two lanes, slowly going back to their own inhibitor all the way around. So that'd take a long route. And they couldn't kill the Jarman because if you go two guys to, to gank him, either Betsy comes in with the TF ulti or you just form and push that mid lane and just take it down so easy with the Korg and TF. So Gambit had the tools to really push their lead. Instead, though, they decided to back away, be a bit more passive, and look for dragon fights, which of course were not in their favor. I actually somewhat disagree because mm. we saw them try to do that actually with the Edward hiding in the brush. They did the 1 for 1, remember that Annie was hiding, and while CJ tried to counter it, they, ro they out-rotated them and get the Annie behind the Nidalee, get that kill, but they didn't keep that up. They only did it once. But that was the problem. That is not the 1-4. The 1-4 is where you have lane control. You had four guys in the lane. Once you push it up to the tier 2 towers, that's where you can walk into the enemy jungle. You deny them vision. You get the your own wards down. And you don't play around them being in, in their own jungle. You play around them having to take the long route around to their towers and being unable to stop a Jarvan from swift pushing and diving that Lulu again and again and again. TF will always be able to move from mid lane to top lane way faster than anyone from CJ can react. And CJ is also not running with any hard engage. So once that TF pulls to top lane, yes, you might have a 4v3 in the mid lane for CJ, but you can't engage because you have no engage. So Gammon just backs away at that time and you keep moving around these two lanes and use your globals and you are insanely strong Jarvan. It's not about walking in the jungle and just creating a pick on the Annie. Schooled. Well, see. No, 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 I'm going to let point. you guys go in a second because actually we have a post-game interview ready with Ambition. Thank you.